and uh, recording next a, uh, a discussion with uh, Mr. Andrew Greenwood uh, in connection with the Westall sighting. So we'll just, uh, if you want to sit down here, and I'll sit over here. I need a little bit more light. That's a heck of a chair, but I guess we can sort of grade here. Yes. I've, uh, I've read uh, some of the material that uh, uh, Paul and Peter have sent me, uh, so I know a bit about it, but uh, I think it's well to just go over the whole thing. Uh, the date of that was what you were calling No, I don't recall, I'm afraid. I'm interested in you to tell me. Westall was April 6th of 1966. Okay. And where, uh, where is Westall? Uh, Westall is uh, situated between Springvale and Clayton, one of these places. It's just to the high school, a couple of shops and a house, and that's about it. And uh, what is, what's the name of this? Is it the Westall School? Westall, W E S T A W A. The Westall no, School is it? High School, Westall West High School. school. How did the whole thing unfold then? Right from the beginning. Uh, yeah. Well, I remember back now. Uh, it's, uh, I think the first thing I heard of it was uh, I was teaching, and the most unusual for another child to sort of run into the class without warning. That's what happened. Uh, one girl raced in and said, Mr. Greenwood, quick, quick, flying saucer outside, etc. And I got rid of her because I wasn't going to leave my class or anything. Oh, you were in the midst of class? I was in the midst of, the midst of teaching a class, yes. Oh, she broke into the, she into the closed in. class. Well, yes, that is rather which unusual. is unusual, yes. Yeah, I wasn't so. the type that one would normally do that to either. You dismissed me so no. So she left and it was about to recess, I suppose, five, ten minutes later. Uh, so coming recess, I thought, well, I'll wander out and, and have a look. I, she was the type that I thought, well, she's a fanciful type of little girl, and I thought, well, I didn't really pay any attention to her, but I'd wander out anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went out, and there must have been oh, more than half the school, about 300 approximately of the uh, boys and girls up the school, on the oval, which is beside the school buildings. Excuse me, do half, of the, half of the school amounts to 300, or are the 300 in the school? So no, about no, 600 half, in the school. Approximately, five, 600 in the school. They were on the oval, uh, looking uh, oh, what direction would it be? Uh, I'll really take myself now. Yeah. I suppose it's uh, uh, east, east, south. Uh, and the object was still airborne then? Oh yes, yes. We we're never sure at any stage that it was anything else but airborne. Although some of the children say that they, they saw it later, but I'll, I'll get to that also later at the point I was at. Uh, well, I think the first thing I can say is I observed the, the object that everyone was, was looking at. It took me a while to see it. It was grey against the um, coming on to autumn, blue-grey sky. I couldn't uh, see it immediately. It was everyone saying, it's there, are you blind? So, uh, but I, I finally picked up what they were looking at. Uh, was it quite small in size? Uh, it was. Well, when I say, well, the only thing I've got to compare it against is uh, later on there were some small aircraft, Cessna size aircraft. Uh, it was approximately two thirds the length of one of those. It's How far away were they? That now, makes the difference. Uh, yes, of course it does. Now they were about. Uh, oh, when when they were there, when they were well, there, it was they, they were sort of circling it. They were. Oh, within, so the absolute size is not. It is approximately two thirds plus or minus a bit. Of the half two thirds, more than half the size of one of these light aircraft. Okay. Uh, now it was just at any stage to me um, cigar shape, uh, cylindrical cigar shape, except on occasions it appeared to bulge in the middle. It's chain shape? Yes, chained in. This the best uh, way I can describe this, hold a, I won't say saucer, I say plate. <laughs> hold a plate on edge and it looks straight across, mm -hmm. tip it slightly and you see it bulge oh. in the middle. In that type of effect. I can't say that's what was happening, of course, but that's, that's what it appeared to be. Uh, 
appear to be. Did, you didn't have a distinct impression of whether that was the cause. You just, uh, you I didn't know whether that was the cause or whether something, whether it actually was bulging in the middle, top and bottom. Okay. But that's what it looked like. Okay. Right. How far away do you think it was at that time? Now, that's another point I have to think back on. Now. I don't know if I've ever, ever given a distance before. If so, that's probably more accurate than anything I can think of now. Uh, no. All I can say is that there were, from where I was standing, it was about uh, 300 yards of pylons, so about all going on for 1,000 yards at the furthest, I would say, at the furthest. The verge zone. Um, more than a half, maybe half a mile. Maybe half, half a mile, mile. Yeah. That would be uh, when it was at its furthest uh, distance okay. from us. Okay. The closest it came would have been, I suppose, half that distance. Uh, right. What's the next point? So you, uh, you saw it there. Was it hovering motionless when you uh, saw well, it? Well, it, it did several things. It, it did hover at different times. It seemed to be able to accelerate and disappear out of sight, and then someone would see it uh, over in another part of the sky, you know, from, through an arc of, I suppose, um, 20 or 30 degrees away from us. In other words, it moved considerable distance, very rapidly. And then it would move back again. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it came towards us. Not that we could see it actually coming towards us, but we can see that it was closer now than it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, it did hover, as I mentioned. It go up and down. As I, when it could move slowly, but generally it seemed to hover or move really fast. But we did see it moving across slowly on a few occasions. One of the big points that um, I got out of this was the fact that it was on its own when we first saw it. And the next thing we noticed was the presence of one of these light planes. I say Cessna type, I don't know what it was exactly. Uh, one of the, uh, a light plane which approached it and then came to try and move around it. The object moved over to another part of the sky very rapidly. The plane followed it over, moved back again. It seemed to be playing a cat and mouse with the, the plane. Then more than one plane, more than one plane arrived. Uh, at the end, uh, it was counted there were five planes there. Although, as you probably heard, Moravan Airport denied the uh, presence of any planes, or they, they actually denied there were any planes in the air. Which is that the only possible airport, Moravan Airport? I think that it, it could be. Moravan is, is very close. It would be four, four or five miles away. And the next one, where any, particularly five aircraft, I mean, obviously one black might take off from his back paddock or something, but uh, not five. And I, I really think it's the only air, airport that um, could be considered. Oh. And you haven't a clue as to why this, uh, why they would deny? Uh, particularly, it's rather silly they would deny it. Then that if you ever go out near Moravan, there is never one spot during the day. I drive past there several times a day, uh, going back and forth between the two schools. Uh, I'm a different school now, I'm at Haverhill College. And there is never a time when there's not planes taking off and coming in. So I think it was rather a silly statement for them to make that at that particular time there were no planes in the sky. And, uh, yes, of course, it could be. Okay, that's, that's, it just stands in that status now, that there's no further clarification of those planes. No, they absolutely deny that there were no planes in the sky. We saw them all right, 300 of us. We did. Oh, oh one thing I forgot to mention. At one stage, it disappeared behind a tall row of pine trees, uh, and from we would it would appear that it, it went um, behind them reasonably close to these pine trees. Now I'm not just trying to think. I suppose they would be 600 yards, approximately, something like that. Mm -hmm. Approximately 600 yards from where we were, and we later went over. And another member of staff and myself walked over in that vicinity to have a look and see if we could see. Lots of the, the kids, of course, left the fence, which they were severely revealed out by the headmaster. Mm. But we uh, we went too. We, we 
trying to see what we could find. There were reports from the or several groups of the children later on that they'd seen one of these typical nests. But uh, I didn't see one myself. It would be the perfect area to, to see one in, lots of long grass. But I, I didn't see one myself, although I looked around for quite a while. Did that, uh, now, or the, the aircraft came, we had the aircraft uh, in there. What uh, did it, uh, did that process go on for many minutes? Well, I suppose if we count the 10 minutes from when it was first, it was first seen, uh, as I said, by this group of girls at a phys ed class who were on the oval. Now, of course, it could have been there before they noticed it. As I say, I couldn't even notice it myself for a while. So it was, uh, until you, it's one of these things that once you see it, then you go on seeing it, you know what I mean? But uh, they're hard to pick up. I think it was just a, you know, the silvery color against the sky. And then right. after you saw it, how, how long was it in sight? Now, ten minutes there, and it disappeared. Twenty-five minutes it was in sight for. Now, it went at the end of that twenty-five minutes, but it could have been there before that. These are all these figures, of course, are quite rough. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. And why did it disappear? Well, this is one thing we, we just don't know. It, 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 it vanished. All of a sudden, we, yeah. while you were all looking at it? No, it did one of these you know, sudden accelerations, and then nobody could pick it up again. It was gone. You did see it accelerate. It oh, yes, yes. It disappear in mid -air. Oh, no, it didn't come. Click out. You could see it accelerate. And it went off so fast, you didn't follow it. We couldn't. That terminated. Were the and aircraft still there? Saw. Yes, the aircraft was still there. I can't remember what happened to those. I know they were there then, but I just can't remember what happened to the aircraft. So we've got the, it was it was cigar shaped. Uh, what the ratio of uh, length to uh, width and so on? And, uh, you know, find this ratio. Was it, uh, like oh, it's a finger or? shape more than anything else. Mm -hmm. about the, the ratio of the thickness of the finger to the length of it. It's the middle finger, something like that. So maybe four, five, and one. Something like that. Yes, Not ten yes, to one. Like and it was a silvery gray, you say. Silvery, so silvery gray. It's hard to see because the grayish cloud. That's right. Yeah. No sound. No. no Nobody no, heard the no. sound. Now, there were all sorts of, of reports of. Uh, different things. Uh, one girl said that she'd seen the thing on the ground and it was uh, uh, oh, you know, this sort of shape with little windows around it and all the rest of it. But uh, I don't really know how much uh, you can put in her story. There were, uh, there were, there was a report of some sound from it, come to think of it, but only from one girl who, who was supposedly close to it. I heard nothing and there was no sound to hear when we were all standing in a large group watching it. But as I say, lots of them jumped the fence and went off after it. I only jumped, I only left the fence and went after it after it disappeared. Uh, you mean it went behind the grove of trees? It went behind the, this is before it disappeared. Yes, it, and that's when they got close to it, allegedly? Well, this is supposedly when they got close to it, yes. What time was this recess? Uh, we'll get out four yeah. 40 minute periods plus uh, when did we start? About 9 o'clock. Well, that's uh, uh, 900, 440 four is 160 minutes. Uh, uh, that's just three hours. Three hours, about 11. Uh, that's 12. Plus 20. That's 12, 20. Is oh, what? Couldn't be. Let's see. Um, uh, that's three hours minus twenty minutes, nine o'clock. It's eleven forty. Oh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, eleven forty. Which is time was eleven forty? Does that sound right? Was noon recess? No, no, no. It was morning, morning tea. Mid morning. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't sound bad, right, right? We started early or something that morning. I think it was about eleven fifteen. But uh, I'm not sure of that. Let's see if the uh, well, it was 
definitely the mid-morning recess, morning tea time. And there's four periods. No, of course. I'm, up, I'm sorry. I'm way off the pole here. There's only two periods before morning recess. There's four periods before lunch. I wonder I was out 80 minutes. It's an hour and 20 from 9 o'clock. Yes, makes it about 10. I'm starting at half to 9. About 10.15 recess started. That's right. 10.15? Yes. I wondered where I was at. There to be somewhere. There's a council all over the place. I've only ever seen the one in the Dandenong Journal. Oh. I don't know I ever saw. Here's the You worked it back there, you think, to your satisfaction? Yes, that was. It, they split in half and then two periods before recess in the morning. And we started approximately 9 o'clock. It's a little bit earlier. So it would be uh, 10 or 15 or something. And okay. recess is a quarter of an hour. It would be 10 15 to, or 10 25. Disappeared about five minutes before the end of recess. Were there any. Uh, uh, Persons off the school grounds who uh, saw it? We never any heard any reports of this. This is one thing that a uh, few of us tried to see or find out about, but we never could find anything. How many teachers it. saw it all together? Uh, uh, the phys ed teacher uh, says she saw something, but won't say anything more. Mm -hmm. uh, the Yes, I think uh, Claude Miller, the senior English master. Claude, uh, C-L-A-U-D-E. Yes, Miller. Miller, senior English master. Is he the one who went across the field? That's it? right, yes. He saw it in the air. Only the very last he came out, just as it was going. The other one, Jeanette Muir, uh, the, his head mistress, he, she was there when it was very first seen. Right She's the beginning. one who said she uh, has climbed up a bit? Yes. Jeanette, G-E-N-A-T-T-E? -E? Yes, that's right. Muir, M-U-I-R. And the, uh, well, this business about the head headmaster, is this a woman or a man? Man, man. Uh, what's his name? Frank Sambleby. S-A-M-B-L-E, B-L-E. S-A-M-B-L-E. B-L-E, B-L-E. Sambleby. 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 Yeah. Sambleby. And he's the one who uh, seemed to be uh, uh, quite influenced by some pressures to keep things quiet, or was this his own? Well, I it? think it was probably whether or not he was influenced by some pressures or not. Uh, we know the Air Force came to the school. Uh, whether or not anything was said to him, I don't know, because of his own volition. Uh, he, I know he had a special assembly lunchtime because lots of the children were back late from leaping events and going to look for it. Yeah. And um, tell them a whole lot of rock the whole thing and be for some people who believe anything that words to this effect. And uh, was the Air Force in there before that recess? Oh no, no, they didn't come for about two or three days. So that couldn't have been blamed on the on the recess. Uh, on, the, on the Air Force. Oh no, no, no I'm saying he had no. a special assembly. A special yeah, assembly no. at lunchtime. No, perhaps I'm going to correct that. He had an, at the assembly that we have, we have an assembly in the morning and afternoon. The assembly. He had a, a special little blurb. Spoke. He spoke about this particular incident. You said it was a lot of nonsense? Yes. Why didn't you I was accused of suffering from the effect of a hangover and a few things. Which How I wasn't. How rationalize that? Uh, is he uh, this? Uh, Simply because he's just kind of a guy, or uh, well, I, I don't know. He he is rather. Uh, it's it's, it's true. So he, he is rather. I can believe that he would say this sort of thing. Why? Because, because it would so disturb the tenor of things. Possibly, yes. He, he, he may, he's he's one of these people. This is possibly how you can just, uh, uh, describe it. Is that he's one of these people that runs his school on the book, and if it's not in the book, you don't do it. And there's no UFO sightings in the book. How to handle them? So therefore, you ignore them. Uh, this is this would be his type of thinking, I, I believe. He's just, it was his first year as a head last year, and everything was being done just so. Mm -hmm. And 
We noticed this on several occasions, that he wasn't prepared to accept anything that, that didn't quite follow regulations. And this, I think from his, his manner and in other things, you, you can explain uh, his attitude in this case. He's that type of person. Yeah. Well, then the Air Force came, and did he, do, did he reiterate these? Uh, uh, not to the school, not to the school. He just told me that uh, uh, an Air Force officer had been out to the school, and I was teaching at the time, and he told me that he wasn't going to interrupt my class so that I could speak to them, and uh, promptly told them to get lost, I gather. I gather that they can't have had much time with him, because uh, I know I was very friendly with the senior master of the school, with the second in command. And uh, he said they were only in his office for very few minutes, and uh, Sam will be sort of come out fuming and uh, muttering, you know, what rot, what rot, and all the rest of it. I guess he should have told them that there was a lot of rot. Forget it. And this, is, I, this is all pure conjecture on my part. It's nice to have somebody telling the RAAF that it's a lot of nonsense and sending them packing. <laughs> That's a new, very <laughs> oh, around, thing, yes. isn't it? They deserve it. <laughs> the, the victims of their own propaganda here are not telling them to yes. get along. Okay, well, is that the main outlines then of the... Uh, I think so. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything else. That what I, you, but, you're presently teaching where? At Haleybury College. The Haleybury College. Uh, H A I L Y E Y B U R Y Haleybury College. B U B U R Y R Y. What do you teach? Science. And what is your uh, what uh, what town do you now live? What what where do you live now? Oh, 395 Waverley Road. A V E R L E Y uh, Mount Waverley. Pardon? I just found it. Uh, what, what is that? Oh, what is the, the code? I think three one four nine or something. I think is the uh, postcode. Yeah, I can't remember it. Phone number is two double seven three zero double one. Two double one seven mm -hmm. three zero double one. What was it? Three one four nine mailing code. Yes. Oh, that's good. Uh, is that about? Uh, we get the high spots on this. Yes. Yes. A lot of witnesses. Yeah, 303, yes, <laughs> you yes, to say. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of them are, were uh, infused with the ideas of little green Martians running around, because they, they'd say anything. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of the, the, the senior students there. What was four, the age? Uh, four, four, four. Oh, well, it would be the whole school, which would be from uh, 11, 11 year olds up to 14, 15 year olds, 15, some 16 year olds, I suppose. Year old. Three members of staff. I think there were only three. There may have been others, but if they were, yeah. they were also going to just shut up and not say anything. Yeah. I know yes. there were there were three at least. I think there's does seem to cover all the ones that I can think of. Was the one of course that amused me the most was the amused isn't the word, but intrigued me most was the, the Moravian Airport plane. One only has to sit beside Moravian Airport at the road that leads beside it and watch the, the planes coming in and out and then listen to their claim that there were no planes in the air. Have you ever gone personally to talk to them? No, I haven't. Um, who was it that ran? I think Claude Miller. Claude. Um, so they were also contacted by. See, the Dandenong Journal took this up. Have you seen, you've seen the, yes, uh, the reports? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the young person who took me out for that story, he was very interested and, and went out and saw them and saw all sorts, interviewed dozens of people from the street who lived there yeah. in that area. And found nobody who saw it. found nobody who saw it. Hmm. Well, we thought so too. Although I must emphasize that it was this, I, I, you can, I think, believe this. In that it probably only was by chance the first person saw it, yeah. and then someone else pointed it out to them, and then we could all see it. But if it wasn't pointed out to you, it was hard to see. Uh, against the, it, it was just purely the effect of the sky. It was a, no uh, figment of our imagination or anything. Yeah. We, could, we could see it, no doubt about it. And it, it looked real. It, it was no. Um, it was hard to explain what I mean by this, but it, it didn't look as though it was a reflection or anything like this. It looked real. Yeah. One had no ways of 
deciding that something is real, it's just whether we get the impression that it's real or not. Oh, very good. I appreciate uh, your talk, wouldn't you? Well, I find it a fascinating topic, particularly yeah. in terms of the, the, the whole... You know, it, it would be fascinating anyway, but it's even more fascinating. Perhaps it's just my perverse nature, I think. But if people try and hide things, I want to find out more about them. So it's a uh, yeah. sort of... Well, it must yeah, be just that, my perverse I nature. That, that, that is, I, I, I must confess that that doesn't particularly do anything but uh, annoy me in this case. Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe I've gone beyond the, the limits of, uh, of when I can be... Uh, uh, but that would seem too much, uh, too much, uh... Well, just a right. If someone wants to hire that, I'd just curiosity kill the cattle or something like that, but well, still, it's, uh, it's just a, a tremendously fascinating... Yeah, it's, it's not really clear whether they're hiding, and they are just so confused that they don't, they're making statements about it. Uh, all together. There's, mm. there's a lot of uh, yes. a lot of evidence, but it's, uh, it's just but nobody uh, knows that they'll shut up anyway. Yeah, in case. yeah. Mm. Quite, quite the same. Yeah. Let's not get ourselves in if we don't know what we're doing. No, no. Just keep quiet until you have yeah. something to find. Out, yeah. Doesn't do anybody anyway. Still. Yeah. Okay, Andrew. Thanks right. a lot for uh, oh. what you doing. Uh, that's the end of the taped interview with uh, Andrew Greenwood, uh, Melbourne, Wednesday, June 28th, 19th.